All right, guys, we're back, and I get asked all of the time, Jamie, how long should my running shoes last? And I'm like, you know, it depends. It depends on a lot of things. It depends on how much you run, how far you run, what kind of running are you doing? Are you trail running? Are you road running? Are you on the track? Different terrains? How much do you weigh? What's your foot strike? All these different variables, it can change a lot of things. So back to the question, it's more so, how can you tell when your shoe is done? So today, this is what we'll do. So today I have a shoe, one of my favorites of the year. This is the Hoka Rincon. And it is a lightweight, neutral shoe, maybe a little bit on the softer side. But here's the thing, shoes are evolving. Shoes, technology, things are changing. Shoes are becoming lighter, more nimble, more flexible. So if I would ask someone, maybe 10 years ago, and I said, how do you know when your shoe is done? They'll simply say, you know, you gotta bend the shoe. If the shoe flexes too much, it's, um, it's done. Or if you reverse flex it, the arch support is gone. If you twist too much, not a good shoe, the shoe support's gone. Or a very big one was the traction. It's kind of like tires. If your traction was really bald and kind of going down, it's like, okay, your shoe's probably done, you probably need to replace them. But like I was saying, technology has changed. Nowadays, shoes don't even have rubber on them. And you're probably thinking, well, why not? Well, the thing is, people want to have lighter shoes. So to make them lighter, you got to compensate. It's a give and take type of thing. Some things must be sacrificed. So for a lot of times, it's the rubber. So a lot of shoe companies nowadays are doing these rubberized EVAs, which means the actual rubber from the midsole is rubberized to where it has some traction, some durability to where you can run on the shoe and still get the benefits of being lighter, still having cushioning, and having some traction. Now the drawback of that is, of course, you're going to have the shoe be very roughed up pretty easily, which in this case kind of debunks the idea of if the traction is kind of worn out, if the shoe's done. So after about two runs, you're going to have some issues as far as like the scraping of the bottom of the shoe. It's going to show. If you have rubber that's exposed and you run on the ground surfaces, it's going to scrape up. So after a couple of runs, you just can't say, oh man, it scraped up, I must replace the shoe. No, no, you're, you're still good, you're still good. It's just the idea that it's gonna show. Uh, sorry guys, I had to move. There was a bee following me and I hate bees. So I was like, you know what, I get out of here. So let's walk and talk. And real quick, I gotta give a shout out to our sponsor of this video, Skillshare.com. They're the ones who made it all happen. So I appreciate them. If you guys don't know about Skillshare, it's a website that pretty much involves anything you could ever think of about learning. Everything from running, to how to cook, to how to improve fitness, because your boy's trying to get in shape, ooh. And yes, I've actually been using it myself. I've been doing more so of the technology side of how to edit videos, so I edit in Final Cut Pro. So I've been learning more things like transitions, color grading, things that help my videos, most of my reviews, look a little better, a little cleaner, a little more professional. And the best part about all the lessons is that it's not one large video where you're just like, oh my God, get to the point. They actually break down the lessons into small pieces. So if you don't want to know about certain things about the topic, you can just get to the part you want to know about. So if you're like, I know how to cook, but like, how do you like marinate your meat? It sounds weird, marinate my meat. <laughs> anyway, if you're interested, links are down below. And if you do use the link, you'll get two months free, Skillshare.com, check them out, hone it down, and let's get back to the video. So like I was saying, the shoes are gonna show a little bit on the bottom, so you can't go with the whole idea that if it's scraped up, the shoe needs to be replaced. And then also, these shoes are light and flexible, so the shoes are gonna flex. So people do the whole idea of, if the shoe flexes from the, from the toe, it's, it's done, or if it flexes invertly, it's, it's done. No, that's not necessarily true. It can be to an extent, but these shoes nowadays are just lighter shoes. But then it works both ways, because you have some shoes that are gonna be stiff regardless. If I go out and buy a stability shoe, let's say the A6 JL GT2000, that shoe is built to be stiff. It's not going to flex very easily. Even when the shoe is done, it's still going to be stiff compared to a brand new shoe that is a neutral shoe, most times. So you can't go off and be like, well, it's because it's not flexing, it's still good. No, the shoe's probably done if it's, if it's done. So how can you tell? The main thing is you got to go off of how it feels. I know it sounds cliche, go off of how it feels, but you got to. I know people like to say, you know, after... 300 miles or 500 miles, the shoe should last this long. I mean, that's a good general idea. But let's be real, your average person, your average elite jogger, runner, whoever, probably isn't going like, oh man, I ran 9.1 miles in my shoes today, unless you like, you know, do the Strava app and you're like putting your shoes on fire. I just wanna run, I don't feel like doing all that extra nonsense. So I just go. 
So for me personally, I go about three months. I say after about three months, the shoe probably won't be as nice as it was. And three months to me is probably on the short end. So I could easily probably go about four or five months in most shoes and be okay. But you have to go off how it feels regardless. So what kinds of shoes will last longer? Typically, your racing shoes, your lightweight trainers, those shoes won't typically last as long. That's just how it works. Less materials, less support, less going on, won't last as long. It'll be lighter though, much lighter and faster, but that's kind of give and take. Or you can get a shoe that's much bulkier, much more built up. Those shoes might last longer, but they won't be as light. You probably won't be running as fast. But once again, that shoe has a purpose. What the hell is going on here? Look at this guy. A motorbike, like an actual bicycle with a motor on it. Dang, millennials. Okay, so as I was saying earlier, I wore the Rencons. And the other day I was running them and I thought, man, these feel okay, but they don't quite feel as good as they used to. So I said, you know what? Let me get a new pair and compare to see how it feels. Is there still life in the shoes? Are they done? Have I ran too long in them? Am I just tripping because they're dirty? I don't know, but let's find out. All right, so here we are. We got the Hoka Rencon. This is the dirty one, all scraped up, as you can see. Now let's check for flexibility. All right, so obviously this flex is a lot easy, not very hard to flex it. The shoe's broken in, as they say. Pretty dirty, traction's pretty much shot. Got it, but to me, it felt a little off. Like, I feel like the cushioning wasn't quite there. The arch in there was kind of kind of flattening out. You know, it is what it is. But here we go, a brand new pair Hoka Rencons, same color. All right, so this one flex pretty easily, not much effort. Let's try this. Oh, okay. So as you can see, it does not flex as much. Now it still flexes a little bit. This is months and months and months of having. This is fresh out the box. And keep in mind, the flex test will depend on the shoe. Hoka's are a little more built up, so they don't flex as easy. But if they do flex very easy, in this case, obviously, that's one way to tell. And then you got the traction. You can probably tell if you get real close, you might see a little bit of how the traction's worn down. Unfortunately, it was a bad day in America for these shoes, but they served me well. The next thing is just the upper. Sometimes you get holes in the uppers. I mean, it's worn out, it's just, it's just stressed out from me running. Uh, most times, if you get the correct size in a running shoe, you'll be okay, you won't have holes in your shoes. People wear shoes that are too tight and then the holes are popping up, they're like, well, there's holes in my shoes. I'm like, well, your shoes are too tight, that's probably why, but you know, I digress. But yeah, if you have holes in your shoes, you know, there's materials falling off of them, the overlays are popping off, that's probably a sign you need to move on to a new shoe. But the one thing I can't actually show is how it feels. But I'll tell you guys about it. So I'm gonna put this brand new one on my right foot and I'll put this left foot, left shoe on my left foot. Typically the left shoe goes with left foot. And let's see how it feels. So this old one right now on my left foot right here, it does feel broken in. Like it's not as cushioned as it used to be, but it kind of fits my foot. This one, it's not tied up, I'm kind of lazy. And this new one's not quite comfortable to my foot yet. Obviously, it's brand new at the box. So, although the fit's actually pretty nice at the box, I can definitely tell that this old one is like more contoured to my foot. It had time to actually adjust my foot, the width of my foot. This one still needs some time to break in a little bit. But I can tell from the arch, the heel, the forefoot, it's just, it just feels like it's much nicer. I feel brand new. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and check for compression. Let's see how it looks. This is the new shoe. This is the old shoe. So I'm not sure if you can tell, but I could feel that the old one definitely compressed more. The cushioning's obviously been broken in, so it's gonna compress a little bit more, a little easier. I think the, the main point of this video is just know guys, you gotta go how it feels. If you want to go off a number of miles, I would say 300 miles is a safe, like, all right, just in case, let's switch shoes. 
And plus, it's just much easier to switch shoes anyway. Sometimes you get bored of the same shoes, so just switch shoes up if you can. But I know it gets expensive, so keep in mind that could be a thing for some people. For me, I like to play it safe because I hate injuries. The worst thing ever is to get injured based off your footwear or your stuff just not holding up. The whole point of a running shoe is to provide some shock absorption to provide some support for your running needs. Especially if you're in a city that doesn't have a lot of like roads. Fortunately here in Austin, we have a lot of roads that are kind of made for running. So for me, I put my shoes, my knees, if I, my shoes last longer, my knees, my feet don't hurt as much compared to when I was running in, a, in Dallas where it was pretty much all concrete. Then at that point, your shoes will get beat up pretty easily. So it all depends. 300 miles, safe bet. I would say up to 500 miles would be like ideal for like a good shoe that would last a very long time. And I know there's people who go, but Jamie, I got a pair of shoes that went for a thousand miles. They're still, they're still good, they're still... Stop it, stop it, y'all. If they're still good, good for you, but for everyone else, why risk it? They're probably dirty, y'all beat up, smell like dust, ooh. All right, guys, so I gotta ask, how long do you go with your shoes as far as like how long they last you? I mean, I have some friends that go off a certain mileage or kilometers. I have some friends that are like, up, oh, it's been three months, I'm done. I have some friends that go on forever and like, oh, my feet hurt, I wonder why. I'm like, so let me know how do you guys keep track of your shoes? What is your method? Do you have an app where you go, I, today I wore the Clifton 6 and I went four or five miles, you know, you do that? In which if you do, that's probably the best way to do it. But it's just kind of annoying to sit down and go, okay, let me write down my mileage today and the shoe and add them all, it's just kind of annoying. So if you have an app, maybe that works for you. I know Shava has an option. And as someone who reviews shoes, I keep track of the mileage up to a certain point. So after about 100 miles, I'm like, okay, I don't care about tracking any shoes anymore. I have too many shoes. So as someone who reviews shoes, I do keep track of my shoe mileage during the review stages. So if you guys ask me, Jamie, how many miles have you ran in your Pegasus 34s? I'm like, I don't know. That was two years ago, bro. I, I don't know. Please don't ask me. So yeah, let me know what you guys do. And with that said, be sure to stay in school. Don't do drugs. And if you can, keep it tight.